Hello everyone, today we are going to take a look at how to create a double exposure image by taking a primary image, which will be our bison, and connecting it with this lovely forest image here. So the first thing we are going to do is, I always like to create a duplicate layer of my original images, so I'm going to have my background layer selected and hit Command J to make a nice easy duplicate, lovely. And I'm just going to hide the background layer by clicking on the eyeball. And now on layer one, what we want to do now is simply select the bison itself. We don't want the green background, we just want the bison. And you can use any selection tool that you want for this. I have become a recent fan of the quick selection tool, which is under here with your magic wand. And I'm just going to click and drag along the bison. It's pretty good at recognizing the similar brown colors. Grab most of the legs, grab the tail, grab the patch of fur a little bit. Good, not bad. And then instead of struggling with the quick selection tool, what I do like to do is simply grab the lasso tool, zoom into areas that I would like to refine. So the tail, for example, I'm just gonna hide my layers panel for this portion. There we go. Remember that if you want to add to your selection, you need to hold shift while you click and drag, outlining the area that you want to be included in the selection. And making sure you wrap around. Now this negative space in the tail, I'm going to hold alt while I trace the inside of it because I don't want it to be selected. There we go. Super. And I do want some of the tail to be selected, so I'll hold shift and I'll kind of just capture the wispiness of the tail. Good. And let's just go around the edges and see what we can clean up. So I don't like this little bump that I have here, so I'll hold the alt key and wrap around. And we'll add to the selection here, just tracing the back of the bison, wrap around, good. Over here, we got kind of a wonky hunch going on, holding shift to add to the selection. And wrap around and let go. And you repeat all along the edges. Here we go, we got some green space that we don't need. So I'm holding alt to get rid of it, good. And now let's get all this good fluffy stuff over here. Hold shift. You can kind of improvise for this part. Good, wrap around. Super. Now my face, we missed a big chunk, so let's hold shift, trace along the outline of the face. Good, wrap around. And let's be sure to include this part of the nose. Good. I won't get too specific with the fuzzies around here, that's fine for our demo purposes, but I will hold the Alt key to get rid of this nonsense here. And let's include the whole foot, so I'm holding Shift, wrapping around the hoof here, adding to our selection. Good enough for this, this one here as well. Let's just roughly grab, there we go. And let's see the other feet, yep. See that blade of grass kind of interrupted our selection here, so I'll hold shift and grab the rest. Good. And we'll just snag this. Kind of mangled, but that's okay. We're just doing a quick demo. Super. All right, so I'm gonna zoom back out by holding Command minus sign, and we have our selected bison, which is excellent. So we'll go over to our layers panel, and the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go up to the options bar at the top here, where we have our lasso tool, and go to select and mask. When you click on that, you open up this new window where you get a bunch of different options, and if you zoom in on the bison, Let's go towards the edge of it, towards the face. And what you'll find here is where you can play around with things like edge detection and global refinements. So if you look at the edge between what we've selected and what is not selected, 
you can play around with what that transition looks like with how smooth the edges are. You can see how they're getting a bit more pixelated. If I bring it back, you can see how much more crisp they are. I kind of like them to be a little bit faded actually. So I'm going to go up to maybe about 20, pardon me. And for feathering, play around, see what you like. So that's a bit too much, but you can see what the overall effect is. It's just like when you're playing around with the hardness level of your brush. So I'm going to keep the feathering actually at zero. Contrast. See what this does. Oh, it kind of resharpens the edges. You can see the square edge of each pixel. I don't like that, so I'm going to bring that all the way back. And the rest I think I'm all right with. So I'm going to click OK. And our selection is still active. And now with this selection active, you are now going to add your layer mask. So with layer one selected, that is very important. Go ahead and click the layer mask icon at the bottom of your layers panel. And if we zoom out, we can see that a mask has been created based off of the selection that we made. Wonderful. And now we are going to add a white background. So we will create a new layer. We will drag it below the bison. Double click to rename it background. Go to our color picker. It's already set to white. We'll grab our paint bucket tool, shortcut G and fill the space. Excellent. And I'll rename layer one bison. Lovely. All right, next thing that I'm going to do is we are going to bring in our secondary image. I'm going to go over to the forest here. I'm going to grab my move tool, which is the shortcut V. Click and drag. Bring it over and release. And we can see that the image is actually quite huge. So I'm going to hit Command T and we're going to bring this to size just so it's the width of the bison. Good. And a little trick which can be very handy. Remember to hit enter to set your transformation. But when you're deciding, or actually, oh, we can play around with opacity. Okay. So while you're in transform mode, you can still play around with the opacity of the layer. So I'm going to lower the opacity just so I can see where the forest will land with the bison while I'm moving it. So now I'm able to move and see where I want the tree line to sort of land. And I think that's pretty good. Or you know what, I might even flip horizontal. Maybe I like the taller trees there. And let's see. Play around until you're happy. I'll say that's good. I'm going to put the opacity back up and I'm going to hit enter. Good, lovely. Now the next step is to begin making simple edits to the secondary image, which is our forest. So I'm going to rename layer one forest. And now we're going to add an adjustment layer. That's this half light, half dark circle here. And I'm going to play around with the contrast and brightness a bit, which is right here. And I'm going to take the brightness down just a bit. And I'm going to pump up the contrast. I really want the trees to be what stands out. Good. Awesome. And then if we go back to our layers panel, I'm going to hold down the alt key and hover between my brightness layer and my forest layer. And I'm going to click. And now that just means that this adjustment is only being applied to the layer below it. And I'm also going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And all I want to do is make the greens even greener for this one. Pump it up to about 25. And I'll go back to the layers panel, do the same thing, hold down the alt key. Perfect. All right, now here is a trick that I just recently learned that's going to help us merge these two images together nice and quickly. So remember, you can play around with the size of your layers icons. So if you click on the negative space here with a left click, you can play around with the size of the thumbnails. And I'll go large for our intents and purposes now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the mask of our bison selected and 
what I'm going to do is hold down the command key and click on this mask and watch what happens over here with the forest. So what it's done is it has selected the outline of the mask. And now with this selection currently active, I'm going to go back to the forest and I'm going to add a layer mask. And now we see that the forest is in perfect silhouette form with our bison, which is great. Remember that we're not going for just a silhouette. We're not going to stop here. We want the two images to be interacting with one another. So now we are going to make the bison more visible. I'm going to adjust the opacity of our forest layer. Make sure that you're actually clicking on the layer itself. And I'm going to drop it down to about 80. Good. You can already see some of the bison's features coming through. And then on the forest mask, I'm going to grab my brush tool, shortcut B. I'm going to play around with a low opacity. Make sure that my brush is feathered, so that will be at zero hardness. And remember that the square brackets can adjust the size of your brush. And I'm just going to try to reveal. Oh, so you see my color right now is currently set to white, which is revealing the forest that we just masked. So let's go back a couple steps. Remember that to take away, because we're trying to remove some of the forest from the bison's head, we want to have black as our foreground color when we're using the brush. So a shortcut to change your foreground and background color is just X. Now black is my foreground. Let's try again. Good. There we go. We got the bison's head showing through, and you can see the effect on the layer mask here. And I'm just kind of going to lightly trace around the edge of the bison just so we can see some more of its texture. Good. And now I'm not a fan of how the hooves were traced, so I'm going to go to the layers panel um, for the bison, and I'm going to actually just full on try to remove the feet by just going over them. And we still have, and actually I'm going to up my opacity for this because I don't want the feet to show at all. Good. Now let's do the same on the forest layer. Good, just kind of have them fade out. Good, nice. All right, so play around with the opacity of the brush and everything until you're happy with how much of the bison is showing through. The key to the double exposure effect that we're trying to get through is that both images are interacting equally. So we didn't just stop with the forest being silhouetted in the outline of the bison. You can see the texture of the bison showing through the forest, but the forest is still very prominent. And now another cool technique to unify this new composition is to add a gradient or a color on top of all of this. So I'm going to go to the adjustments at the bottom here and I'm going to go to gradient and up here for gradient fill I'm going to choose this purple and orange one it looks very drastic right now. Alrighty and I'm actually going to unlink it or actually no I'm going to click and drag this whole thing and put it right at the top of everything. There we go. And now I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and drop the opacity way down, maybe to about 40% or so. There we go. Good. Actually, I wonder what soft light would do. Oh, I like soft light. It lets the green show through a bit more. But everything's still looking very interactive right now. Excellent. Good. Once you're happy with the aesthetic, we're going to move on now to turning this into more of a poster. And a cool trick that I learned recently is that you can actually use the crop tool, which is over here, shortcut C, to create new size for your canvas. So I'm going to hit command minus sign just to zoom out. And with these boundaries now, you can pull up to add additional space to your canvas. And when you're happy with it, you can click the check mark or hit enter. Super. So now we got the transparent space here, but all we need to do to fix that is go back to our background. 
use our paint bucket and fill it with white. And now for this portion, we just want to fill this with uh, some meaningful text. So let's pretend that this was a poster for a conservation effort that was going on to perfect Canada, protect pardon me, Canada's forests. So if we go to our text tool, and let's say, let's see, one of my favorite plain types is called Century Gothic. And let's just write, up here you can change the color. Remember that all your tool options are on this option bar at the top. Let's change the color to, there was purple in that gradient that we used. So let's choose a super deep, deep, deep purple. Good. Now I'm just gonna type, detect there. Now remember that to change tools, you can't use the shortcut V because it'll think you're typing. So you'll have to actually click off the text and then you can click B to activate the move tool, drag it in. And now what I want to encourage you guys to do is go on to websites like defont.com, which are really fantastic for downloading free, well, fonts. And just for those of you who don't know it, that is defont.com. Okay, if you go into your browser and look that up, you can find some really cool stuff. I went on there earlier and I found this particular font called Wildwood. And let's see what that does for us. So with text, if you want to just simply change the actual size of it, if the layer is selected, you can hit Command T and transform. And if you hold Shift and Alt and drag from a corner, it will expand based on that center point. See, it all looks very woodsy with the branches and everything. And there you go. And what another fantastic thing would be, would be to change the color of the text, maybe add on a bark texture on top with a nice blending mode. And you could even include a little logo at the bottom for uh, Canada Canadian Wildlife Federation. And there you have a beautiful and impactful poster. So I encourage you guys to explore. This is not the only way to do double exposure, not even close. There are countless ways and you can do it in any way that you are comfortable with. But I am a big fan of layer masks and blending modes. So have fun playing around and look up as many tutorials as you can. Enjoy everyone. It's your turn.